So let's get started. Um, our first paper is titled Trading Fees in Intermarket Competition. It's written by Mario Panidis from the University of Cyprus, Barbara Rindy from Bocconi University, and Ingrid Werner from The Ohio State University. Our presenter is Marios. Marios is an associate professor who's published on the role of market makers, on hidden liquidity, and a range of other market structure issues. So I'll hand over to Marios to uh, start the presentation. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, actually, good evening, Carol. Uh, I believe there is a, uh, I think seven hours difference from Cyprus, a uh, year ahead. Um, so yes, uh, this, is, um, this is a paper, as the title suggests, of trading fees and competition is um, joint work with Barbara from Bocconi and Ingrid from the, uh, the Ohio State. Uh, I hope you can all see my slides. Um, so we all know about trading fees. Uh, especially at this conference. Um, trading fees uh, are imposed by electronic trading pl platforms, which is um, uh, the most prevalent form of uh, trading platforms nowadays, or it's all electronic. Uh, and it's a tradition tool for competition for order flow. Um, the, the most popular type of, uh, uh, of fees, of uh, pricing fees, is the make it take a pricing fee. And this is what we uh, focus on in, in this paper. Um, when a market has a make it a pricing fee, it, basically the goal is to attract limit orders by, uh, by uh, giving them a little rebate while uh, charging um, liquidity takers with a fee. Uh, examples are everywhere, as I said, uh, electronic communication networks in the United States, multilateral uh, trading facilities in, um, in Europe. Uh, there are also some rare cases of uh, inverted uh, uh, make-a-taker fees, which are take-a-maker fees. In those cases, uh, you, you, you attract market orders, you, you provide a rebate for those, uh, while you charge liquidity suppliers uh, gain access to order flow. Uh, but as I said, we're going to be focusing on make-a-taker uh, uh, pricing fee. Um, Make it that the pricing is controversial. According to a lot of academics, uh, they have uh, criticized uh, uh, this type of uh, pricing fees. Uh, in general, uh, this type of pricing fees are controversial, not just make it take the pricing. Uh, the, 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 one of the re uh, there are many, many reasons uh, why that's the case. Uh, one of it is that it takes away transparency of where the true fees are um, um, or the true spread in that sense. Um, and it also, um, it also, we have evidence that uh, uh, it distorts uh, the role of brokers in the sense, uh, and brokers now uh, um, sort of uh, break this fiduciary responsibility for, uh, for clients and they chase rebates. Uh, that, that, that there is a very nice paper by Bataille et al. Uh, that shows that uh, in the options market, um, and it, it does hurt uh, venues that don't have make it take a pricing. Uh, importantly for the United States, uh, it circumvents its tick size rule, which is extremely important for REC and MS, for the production. Um, um, and in general, it might affect uh, in ways that we don't, it's not really clear, this mixture of market and limit orders. So uh, Thierry is suggesting uh, that we should need, uh, we should uh, move on with experiments to see um, the effect on, on market and limit orders of, uh, of, uh, of the make take fees. Uh, in addition, what I want to say is that uh, relatively recently, a lot of uh, market operators have um, also been very vocal in actually asking for reductions in make take fees uh, and even uh, elimination. Uh, what are we doing in this paper? We are um, looking at make take fees, as I said, and we want to see the effect on market quality and market share of a change in those fees. Uh, it's very important for us to also include competition, um, intermarket competition, and how this competition interacts with the effects of the, of the changes in make take fees. Uh, we also uh, investigate whether these changes uh, differ across stocks. Uh, we're going to be very clear what we mean by that. Um, uh, 
So let me be, uh, give you a brief highlight of our results, just because I, I know for a fact I'm not going to have time to finish the talk. Um, okay, so what do we have in this paper? In this paper, we have a model and also empirics. Um, we have um, a, a dual market model of limit order books uh, with the make take fee and uh, a discrete pricing grid, meaning a fixed size. Uh, as I said, we do take a kind of competition by having two markets competing for order flow. And we, do, uh, and we use this model to um, construct predictions um, on uh, how the changes affect market quality and market share that we then take to the data. Uh, the data are from BATS Europe. Um, there was an event of uh, fee changes for BATS but, but Europe, and, and, and we look at that, and we find significant changes in market quality and market share, uh, both for the venue implementing the change in competing venues. So we, we see that um, this competition affects uh, even the markets that uh, do not uh, have the do not introduce the changes. Uh, and then, interestingly, we document cross sectional differences uh, between large and small capitalization stocks, suggesting differences in the investors' reactions to those, uh, to those changes. Uh, when it comes to literature, I'm going to be very, very brief. There is uh, both theory and empirics related with our, with our paper. When it comes to the theoretical work, I think we have a nice addition to the existing papers that uh, you can see in front of you because we have a dual market, two limit order books. Uh, we have frictions. Uh, and importantly, we have four price levels that I'm going to be very detailed later on. Um, um, and um, we introduce the make take fee uh, in those uh, limit order books and we look at what happens to market quality and market share. Uh, from the empirical part, uh, most of the papers uh, look at increases in make take fees. Uh, we look at decreases in make take fees. And I think that's uh, nice because, uh, as I said, uh, most market operators and, and even practitioners and politicians are asking for reductions. So it's nice event that we focus on, on reductions. Uh, let me uh, introduce you to our model. As I said, it's a, uh, a model with four prices, price levels, two of the ask and two of the bid, uh, around the asset value. Uh, we have a tick size. Uh, so, um, and then we have uh, either three or four periods. We have two models, one with three periods and another one with uh, four periods. Um, I mentioned that already, we have identical limit order books. We're going to two identical limit order books. We're going to call the first primary, the second one competing. Uh, and those two books will have different trading fees. Um, they both, uh, both books open empty. Uh, size is normalized to one, fixed size is 0 0.01. Uh, at each period now, um, uh, traders choose to post either a limit order in the books or a market order or not trade at all. So there is this trade of between non execution cost and cost of cost of limit orders and market orders. But um, the, the, the decision of what to do, the action they're going to take, uh, uh, the strategy is going to be based on the one of the conditions is going to be the uh, personal valuations. They, at every time uh, they have uh, an investor comes in with a uh, personal valuation gamma uh, about the asset value, uh, which is uh, is drawn from a uniform distribution with a support. Uh, and we actually look at two different supports, uh, a large support, zero two, uh, and a small, uh, small support, a, a change, a small change to the support instead of zero two is 0 0.05 to 195. So in essence, we have four different models. Uh, the frequency is one, either three periods or four periods. And then we're gonna have either large support or small support. Um, now, um, what determines their actions? Um, uh, it's gonna be related with the profits uh, that they would gain from uh, trading for our investors, just to give you a brief summary of what these profits are. It's a very standard setup for the profits where it involves the personal valuation, um, but also the fees of each of the markets. For example, if someone wants to submit a market order to sell, uh, 
it, it's going to be because he has personal valuation that the, the gamma is very low. Uh, so he's going to uh, gain the difference between the, the, the price that he's going to get from selling, um, either the primary or the competing market, minus the personal valuation. That's going to be the gain from trading. However, because we do have a, a, a fee for market orders, is also going to incur the, the fee. So for the first row, you can see that there is a difference between the price that uh, the market is executed minus the personal valuation, minus the take fee of the primary market, or the small capital TF for the for the second for the competing market. Now, if 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 the if the investor submits a limit order, so the limit order, the the profits would be the difference between the limit order price. And the personal valuation, uh, but because he's submitting a limit order, he's going to gain the the make fee, which uh, is a rebate. Uh, of course, it's under the assumption that the limit order is executed, so it's multiplied by the probability of execution. The probability of execution, I'm going to talk about it uh, a little bit later, is is, is related with uh, a lot of parameters, uh, including the state of the book. Uh, the, the fees in, in the state of the book in both markets, the fees in both markets, and given our model, if it's a uh, high frequency, no frequency, or high and low support. The same holds for uh, if, if, you, if he wants to buy, the investor wants to buy. Uh, and of, as I said, there is also the option of trade. Uh, the model is solved by backwards induction, so it's a close from solution. Uh, in a pre-period model, we can start from period three, where investors can only submit market orders, and we can calculate uh, the probabilities of those market orders that basically become um, um, important for limit order execution. Those are the probabilities of limit order execution at T2. Uh, as I said, uh, everything is determined on the profits, uh, the payoffs, the expected payoffs. Um, and that's the formula for, for determining the whys, which are the actions. Uh, it's important to say again that it depends on uh, the personal valuation is very important at uh, each period, the state of the books and the fees. Uh, let me give you, uh, so that's what we do in the model. Uh, we identify for each one of our models um, measures of market quality, spread, depth, um, uh, market share. And then we uh, construct uh, predictions based, based on those. So, so then we compare those market quality measures if we, perturb, if we, if we reduce fees or if we change the fees. Uh, so we can say something about what happens when you change the make fee uh, which is a rebate or when you change both the make fee and the take fee. And those are the predictions that I'm going to show you right now. Uh, first, uh, what happens based on our model when you see a reduction in rebates? Uh, remember, we have two markets, primary and competing. What happens is once you see a reduction in rebates, you see that market quality deteriorates basic and, and order flow moves from the primary market to the competing market. The spreads go up, depth goes down in market share. Uh, re reduces for, for the primary market. Interestingly, when we compare results with our four different models, small support, large support, low frequency, light, high frequency, we find that our results are stronger for small support, high frequency, which um, basically the results uh, show that there is a higher order flow migration outflow towards the competing uh, venue. Um, so this is uh, quite reasonable uh, if you consider that uh, uh, there are market, uh, when, when we talk about small support, uh, it means that you get less gains. There is hit, less heterogeneous um, uh, gains from trade. And, and uh, what, what this means is that investors most likely submit uh, more uh, limit orders. Uh, the same holds for high frequency markets when you increase N. Uh, investors will submit more uh, limit orders, and uh, limit orders are more affected, uh, or the limit uh, investors are more uh, react more to rebates in in those scenarios of small support and high frequency. So 
So we see that that's actually um, what happens, and, and they, there is a higher order flow towards uh, outflow towards competing markets. Um, our second prediction is when we decrease both the make fee, which is a rebid and the take fee, what happens? Well, then we see that uh, the opposite happens, really. Um, when it comes to the main results, uh, we see an inflow of, um, of um, limit orders and market orders to the prime market. Market quality improves. And looking at the, the different effects when it comes to small support, high, high frequency and large support, low frequency, we see the opposite result. We actually see that um, uh, the effects are stronger uh, for large supports, uh, for low frequency uh, scenarios, uh, the, the market, the deterioration, the improvement in market quality is, uh, is stronger. And um, that's, uh, that's again, it, uh, it, it's again related with uh, the idea that uh, um, uh, limit orders are more attracted to, uh, to make fees. So when um, um, in the small support, um, or, or high frequency. So when they see a reduction in the rebates in the main market, they're not attracted as much to that market and they stick to the competing market. Uh, so that's why you see a lower, uh, lower uh, effect for the, the subsample to the right, the, the, the two cases to the right. Now, uh, moving to the data, as I said, we're using the BATS uh, event. Uh, 2013, where both markets from BADS, CAIX, and uh, BADS, B, uh, CXC, and BXC have a reduction um, in their fees. In, in particular, for the CXC, there is a reduction in the rebates, whereas for the BXC, there's a reduction both in the rebates and, and, and in the take fees. Uh, the, the competing market to those uh, markets, which uh, is it's another uh, multilateral trading facility, Turquoise, there are no changes to that to that market. So basically, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be trying to see if our predictions from our model hold empirically uh, by comparing uh, the, the effects to the, the different markets. And for us, turquoise is uh, is a competing market. The time period is one month. We're just taking one month around the event. Uh, our sample is a stratified sample of 120 London stock exchange listed uh, companies. Um, we do a stratified sample with respect to market cap and, um, and price. Uh, we're also using a control sample, a uh, control group in our um, analysis, especially the difference in difference analysis. Uh, and for that, we're using Australian uh, stock exchange list firms, 120 uh, firms. Uh, chosen based on a similar stratified methodology. Uh, for data, we're using Thomson Reuters, uh, history, I'm not sure it's now called Refinitiv, uh, and, and also end of day from Thomson Reuters to gather the information for all of our markets. Uh, our measures of market quality, our spread, depth, volume, and also we use, uh, we look at market share. We're also using Teresa Fertilizer for some of our uh, methodology, we are, um, we're actually using, I'm going to be focusing primarily on panel regression, where it's a difference in difference analysis around the event, the standard setup, where we're going to be focusing on the treatment types post, uh, even though we're also using time series, uh, just the differences, but focusing on the panel regressions. Um, we are um, using, as I said, for control of the Australian market. And we have classic standard errors by data firm. Uh, how do we map the theory to the empirics? What we're going to do is go, we're going to be focusing on three markets, as I said, BXC, CXC, and turquoise. And we're going to be looking at the relative changes um, that happen uh, for each one of the market versus uh, other market. For example, we know that the BXC reduces make the fee. Uh, so the reduction uh, will be with respect to turquoise first, we're gonna be focusing on that. And then we're also gonna be doing the reduction in the make take fees with respect to CXC. Knowing that CXC reduces rebate, the, the reduction is slightly less, uh, but we use prediction two for both, meaning there is uh, for, for with respect to 
each one of the competing markets, turquoise or CXC, there is a similar reduction in expertise for peaks. Um, but then when we move to see predictions with respect to CXC, for example, we will take into account the fact that CXC reduces uh, make fee uh, with respect to turquoise. But then we know from above, from the first part that uh, when it comes to BXC, that uh, in fact, um, seeing CXC increase its make and take fee with respect to BXC. So it's the exact opposite of what BXC happens with respect to CXC. And we do the same thing for turquoise. I'm going to be very specific when it comes to um, the next slides. Uh, and then how do we map the, pred the predictions when it comes to um, our four different models, large support, small support, and frequency? We're going to be uh, focusing and saying that large market cap stocks uh, are related with small support. Um, there are uh, less heterogeneous gains from trade. There is more likely to use limit orders. Uh, they have more frequency, whereas small, small cap stocks are the ones that uh, are going to be capturing um, um, large support and low frequency. Uh, as I said, first we're going to be focusing on what the model says for PXC. So again, it's relative to the other two markets. When it comes to turquoise, PXC reduces make and take fee. Uh, and we know from um, our prediction that that will result in improvements in market quality for BXC uh, and the effects are stronger for small. When it comes to CXC, again, BXC with respect to CXC, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a smaller change in make take fees. Uh, but again, it's a similar idea. There is an overflow towards BXC from CXC uh, and the effects are stronger for small firms. So in both cases, if we add the two effects up, we expect uh, BXC to have the strongest effect, the strong effects to show for small firms. And if we look at the data, first we see that there is an improvement in market quality. Um, uh, there is uh, a, redu a reduction in spread, uh, volume, volume and market share increases overall, but that the results are primarily for small stocks. Uh, Market quality improves for most stocks, volume of market share improves for most small stocks. Uh, and that's not the case for, for large stocks. Uh, with that logic, we follow toward to, uh, now to the CXC markets. What happens to CXC relative to each one of the other two competing markets? When it comes to BXC, we know that there was an increase uh, because of the decrease in BXC. It, it reflects that. Uh, it's reflected to an increase for uh, rebates and take fees for the CXC market, uh, which we just saw anyway for the big CXC. It's not like there's nothing different. We, we just now reverse it in and, and, and call in primary CXC versus competing CXC, which was before. It's the same idea. I'm not changing anything. Uh, it's going to be uh, an outflow towards big C for, uh, primarily for, for small stocks. Uh, but what happens to the reduction now of, uh, of CXC when it comes to the make fees uh, uh, with respect to turquoise, um, we see that uh, there's going to be, because there's a reduction uh, in rebates, it, there's going to be an outflow towards the uh, competing market, which is uh, turquoise. And the effects uh, of the reduction in market quality and market share should be large, should be stronger for large firms. So if we add the two up, we should see that um, uh, we get strong effects both for large firms and small firms uh, for, for CXC, according to our model. And this is exactly uh, what we find in the data when it comes to CXC. We find that overall there is a deterioration in market quality. And that deterioration happens for both uh, large firms and small firms. There is a reduction in spreads for both large firms and small firms. And lastly, uh, when it comes to turquoise, um, I, um, uh, as I mentioned already, there is a, an increase in make and take fee with respect to BXC. This is something that I showed you before for BXC, but now the primary maker is turquoise. I just reversed it. Uh, there is an effect of moving order flow moving to BXC, but stronger for small firms. 
And then I, I also show you what happens with respect to CXC. Hercules as a primary market will gain uh, order flow from uh, CXC, and the, the effect should be stronger for large firms. So here we see that there is an asymmetry in the effects. For small firms, we expect to see turquoise market quality to deteriorate, whereas for large firms, we expect to see uh, market quality and market share to increase. Um, and when we look at the data, uh, overall, we see that market share increases in the um, in the turquoise market, but then that comes primarily from large firms, which is what we expected, that the improvements market quality and market share comes from large firms. But as from small firms, we see that market share decreases. Um, according to model, it should move to, um, to BXC. Uh, so if I now can uh, have an overview of our results, uh, what we see in the data, we see that um, these BATS fee changes did not benefit any of the BATS markets for large stocks. Because what we find is that for large stocks, turquoise uh, benefits uh, because both its market, market share improves and market share, market quality improves, I'm sorry, and market share uh, increases. Uh, we, whereas we see uh, detrimental effects uh, on market quality for both BXC and CXC large firms. Whereas uh, when we look at small firms, small stocks, we see that BXC now um, um, improves uh, both in market quality and market share. Uh, and uh, we can't say then that bad speed reductions did benefit small stocks. Uh, and in particular from the two markets of bats, it benefit only BXC and not CXC. Uh, but that is all consistent with our, uh, with our model of the prediction. Uh, and then uh, if I can talk a little bit about our robustness checks, we actually do a few more things in our paper that uh, I haven't uh, um, shown you here. Uh, we look, as I said, the time series uh, on the differences, and then we also look at difference and difference by using LSC market as a control. Uh, LSC market is, 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 is uh, we expect LSC market to be less likely to be affected by um, the uh, the, the make fee changes, uh, partly because it has uh, a captive order flow, partly because it has a different uh, fee structure. Um, it has flat fees uh, and very large, large tech fees. So we consider that to be uh, a reason why not uh, to include it as a control. Having said that, we uh, we, if any change that happens to the LSC market, we take that into consideration by using the Bemer et al. methodology. And instead of focusing on the treatment times post in a different diff analysis, we focus on the joint effect. So we add the, any effect that, that might happen in LSC, which is in, in empirically, it's, a, it, it, it's very, very, um, the effects are very small for LSC market. Importantly, we also look at trading fees, uh, which, um, is something important and interesting, and it does benefit uh, um, the the fee changes do benefit uh, the bats market when it comes to trading fees. Um, uh, and then we also look uh, 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 to, to consistent with um, to, to address some issues uh, related with the theory. We also look at kumpi spreads, and and we find that the effects are still there um, for kumpi spreads, meaning. Uh, we also uh, add the tech fees in, in the spread. Uh, I'm perfect, I think. I, I have to start my presentation, which is fantastic. Let, let me remind you of our um, main findings. We have a model uh, in our paper uh, with two limit order books and, and a discrete pricing grid. Uh, our goal is on competition. We have two limit order books. We focus on the effects of market quality and market share when we change the tech fees, they make tech fees. Um, and then we take those predictions to the data and we find empirical support. Interestingly, we find uh, cross-sectional differences uh, in large and small capitalization firms, which uh, does suggest uh, that there is a different investor reaction to make take fees uh, it, um, that can be explained by the large and small, uh, that the effects are different for large and small uh, firms. And the policy implications of our results, uh, I think, um, 
we show clearly show that reductions uh, in make take fees uh, make the markets worse, especially for large uh, caps, uh, and, and and so that the oper market operators that uh, sort of want these reductions, they should be uh, they should think twice. Uh, uh, it might be ill-advised, we say in the paper, to ask for the most liquid stocks to reduce the make take fees. Um, uh, but overall, we add to the debate of uh, the make take fees, and I think our findings have implications for the design of the infamous access fee pilot that now is frozen in the United States um, uh, based on our results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marios. You're spot on time, and we didn't get any clarifying questions, so I think that means you're also very clear. Uh, so we'll move straight into uh, Thierry's discussion, and I encourage you to ask questions uh, in the meantime so that they're ready for a discussion after Thierry. So Thierry is a Professor of Finance at HSA Paris. Uh, as you saw from Marios' presentation, he's published in this area and has written a number of papers on trading fee models. Uh, so he's very well placed to discuss this paper. So over to you, Thierry. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, go for it. Okay, go for it. Uh, thanks a lot for, for giving me this, uh, the possibility to discuss this uh, very interesting paper. So let me start with uh, a, a quick summary of what the paper does, in my opinion. Well, it does two things. First, it provides a new theory of competition between uh, two limit order books with make or take a pricing and a non zerotic size. So this is really the combination of the two, which is uh, new in the literature here. And then it provides an empirical analysis of the effect of a change in its trading fees by BATS on uh, BXC and CXC. And it looks at the effects of those changes on trading volume, BIDA spreads, depths, and, and market share for, uh, for BXC and, and CXC. And in my opinion, the main empirical finding that I find very surprising is that here is a case of a platform, which is BATS. And this platform ultimately is going to increase its total fee, that is the price it charges for trading, and yet is going to gain market share. This is the case whether you look at BXC and CXC in the main test of the paper. Uh, so this is very surprising. As an economist, you would expect that when the price of something goes up, the demand for that something goes down. That's not the case here. That's not what they find. And I think the reason is that this has to do with the fact that at the same time, the make and take fees on BXC and CXC changes. So that suggests that exchanges can somehow attract, attract trading uh, by, uh, by adjusting in a clever way their make and take fees, even though you know the price, the total price of trading might change. So that being said, I'm going to step back a little bit um, discuss what, what my view the policy debate is about, and then I will come back on the, on the finding in the paper. So let me, let me first provide some, uh, some view on the, on the debate. So I think in the debate about maker take pricing, it's very important to distinguish two, two things, which are the level of the trading fee, that is the revenue earned per share or per euro in the case of BAT by a trading platform, each time there is a transaction on the platform, and then the way this fee is split, allocated, if you wish, between makers and takers. Uh, and maker taker pricing is just a particular division in which the maker is going to receive a rebate and the taker is going to be charged. So let me give an example to clarify what I mean, which is consider BXC. Uh, BXC before 2013 was charging a total fee per, per transaction per euro traded of 0.1 uh, basis points. And then this fee uh, increased to 0.15 basis points. That's what I mean by the total fee. The total fee has increased. The price of, the tr the, the price of trading on, on, on BXC has increased. That's the case for CXC as well. Now the division of the charge has changed as well. That is before 2013, 
the rebate for makers was minus 0.18 basis points and the tech fee was 0.28 basis points. After 2013, the tech fee is smaller and the make fee is zero. But we have two changes really at the same time here. We have a change in the level of the fee, the price of the service, and then we have a change in the division of this price, this charge between maker and takers. And in my opinion, it's very important in the debate to distinguish the effect of the two. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me show you a citation here from the, from the SEC. So this is taken from a press release by the SEC about the pilot that the SEC wanted to implement in the US to, to learn about the effect of tech fees. And this citation suggests that the debate is very much about the two dimensions, the level of the fee and the effect of the division of the fee, of the total fee. And, and in my opinion, the debate is about competition overall. That is the question is whether we can rely on competition between trading platforms to make sure that eventually the price they charge for trading, the total fee, is competitive, or do we need regulatory intervention in this space? And to address these questions, there are two related but distinct questions. So that this is what makes the debate very complex, which is, is competition sufficient to reduce total trading fees? And that, this is one question, and does the possibility of charging different, different fees between maker and takers encourage or uh, hinder competition? Which is, a different, which is a different question. That is, you can ask the second question holding the total fee constant. This is not what has been done typically in the empirical literature because that's very difficult to do with the data that we have, with the experiments that we have in the field. But ideally, this is what you would like to do. You would like to say, if I maintain the total fee, what do I see when I change the division of the charge between maker and takers. So ideally, this is the experiment you would like to run. Very, diffi to, uh, very difficult to do with field data. This is where pilot experiments or lab experiments could be very useful. Another difficulty in the debate is that there are really two layers of competition here. There is competition between platforms, and there is competition between liquidity providers within and across platforms. And of course, you know, when, when we talk about rebates and tech fees, those two layers of competition are going to interact together. Um, so again, what we need to understand in this debate, I think, is holding the total fee constant, is there a role for make and take fees? And why, why is there such a role? And I think that here it would be very important to start from a well-defined null hypothesis. And economics suggests one very well-defined null hypothesis, or benchmark, if you wish, which is that make tech fees, holding the total fee constant, should be neutral. That comes, you know, from uh, the theory of taxation in economics. There is an important principle in this theory, which is called the neutrality principle. That is, if you have a, uh, a tax on transaction, whether, you know, the consumer is going to pay the tax or the producer is going to pay the tax does not matter. It's neutral in the sense that that's not going to affect whether the transaction takes place or not, for instance. Why? Because the price of the transaction is going to adjust to make it neutral. Of course, the total level of the tax is going to matter. If you charge a larger tax, theory predicts that you will have fewer transactions. So I think this gives us a very, you know, a very simple prediction, null hypothesis about make tech fees, that is. The make tech fee breakdown, holding the total fee constant should be neutral. It should not affect trading outcomes. Uh, this is sort of a modigliani miller type of uh, prediction, if you wish. modigliani miller is this result that says capital structure for firm should not matter. Of course, this is not true in reality. I'm almost sure, even though this is difficult to test, that this prediction is rejected. Where, the reason why this prediction is interesting is that it gives us a clear benchmark. That is, it gives us you know, a clear set of conditions under which we should not expect effects. And so, by contrast, it tells us when we should expect effects. So let me clarify uh, what I mean by that. Uh, again, what we would like to understand is why maker-taker pricing, maker -taker pricing might be important, holding the total fee constant. There is no doubt that you know that variation in the total fee is going to, to, to matter. The question is whether holding the total fee constant make tech fees do matter. And there are many arguments which have been given by practitioners and academics here. And I think there are so many arguments that in those debates, your theory is very useful because some of these arguments do not fly, do not resist you know, logical analysis. For instance, one argument I heard in the past is that, 
why very simple. Platforms need to offer rebates because they must first attract makers to then attract takers. It's sort of saying like uh, in the egg and chicken problem of liquidity, you need the egg to get the chicken. Well, uh, what I did with one of my colleagues, Jean-Edouard Collier, in a paper published in 2012, is to show that this argument does not hold. That is, even if we have competition between two limit order books, then we will get the neutrality result if courts can adjust freely. And the intuition is very simple, which is in the absence of frictions, if makers get rebates, they are going to pass through those rebates to, uh, to takers so that eventually the outcome, the maker-taker pricing uh, is neutral. What is not neutral is the level of the fee. So what do you need you know, to, not, to, to get away from this neutrality result? Again, you know, I, I do not think our prediction is correct. Yeah, I'm sure in reality, maker-taker pricing matters. That's the reason why exchanges spend so much time on thinking about their make take fees. But what the result, where, where the result is useful is to think about why it may matter in reality. So I think there are many, there are many possibilities, which are not, for instance, in the model I, I mentioned before, which is, first of all, in reality, quotes have to be positioned on a, on, on a grid. There is a tick. And this feature is very important because it prevents uh, makers from neutralizing the effect of, make, uh, of rebate by adjusting their quotes. There are several papers making this point theoretically. I have one paper doing, making the point uh, with Wat Kadan and Kanner. There is another recent paper by Chao Yao and Nye in the Review of Financial Studies. And I think the paper that, in the theory part of Mario's paper and Barbara's paper and Ingrid paper, uh, this is the reason why make tech fees are not, are not neutral. Well, another reason in the US is that in the US there is the no threat rule which is going to distort writing decisions by, by takers in the sense that in the US, takers have to route their, their orders to the platform posting the best quotes independently of the tech fee. That is, the rule is based on quotes, growth of fees, not net of fees. And of course, you know, that changes completely the rule of the game here. And in this case, I would expect, you know, of course, uh, uh, platforms providing rebates to have an advantage. Interestingly, we don't have this rule in Europe. In Europe, we have no trade rule, and yet we see platforms like BATS using make or take a pricing. So that suggests that there are other factors. I guess, again, that price discreteness is a very important factor. So controlling for tick size uh, is typically very important when we think about the effect of uh, make or take a pricing. And there are additional factors. My point is that whether those factors make sense or not, uh, should be related on whether or not they hinder, they change in writing decisions and they change the ability of people posting quotes to neutralize the effect of any change in, um, in make tech fees. So with that in mind, let me move you know, to the discussion, uh, to, to, to specific comments on, on the paper by Marius, Barbara and, and Ingrid. So first regarding the theory. Well, in the, the, in the theory, um, there are two cases which are explored. The case in which the make fee changes, but the tech fee does not change. But in this case, we have both a change in the level of the fee and the division of the fee, the breakdown. So this case is a bit difficult to interpret because maybe the effects were the predictions that we have in the theory are coming more from the change in the level of the fee than the change in the make tech fee breakdown. So what I would suggest to, to Mario, Barbara, and Ingrid to do is to consider a case in which only the total fee is changing that will help to, to isolate the effects which are coming from the total fee level in the theory. In the second case in the theory, they consider a case in which the make and take fees change so that the total fees and change. That's interesting. I think that's, that's a very important case to consider. And in this case, they find that in their model, the make take fee breakdown matters. For instance, trading volume is going to adjust. Bid as spreads are going to adjust. But the question is why? And here, the paper is not completely clear. I think that most likely, price discreteness is key. This is what prevents makers from neutralizing the effect of the, effect of the change in the make tech fees, even though the level of the fee is not changing. And so it will be interesting to consider two subcases here where you vary the size of the tick. Because in all the, in all the numerical analysis in the paper, the size of the tick is fixed at uh, 0.01. So varying the size of the tick in the theory will be very useful to, to, to better understand the source of the effects. Let me move to the empirics now. 
Uh, maybe let me move to this, uh, to this point because I think this is the main, the main result. So here I summarize uh, the table that, has, uh, 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 that Marius has shown, which I think provide the main empirical finding of the paper. And so that shows you know, the effect of uh, the change in fees on DXC and CXC on volume, market share, and so on and so forth. And I think the most surprising result for me is that the total fee on BXC and CXC is going up, and yet the market share of BXC and CXC go up as well. That's very surprising from an economic viewpoint. That's most likely due to the fact that the make and take fees are changing at the same time, but the question is, is why? I would like to understand more you know, the mechanism which is behind these results. Uh, and so for this, again, I think it would be very useful to consider the case in the theory in which the level of the fee is changing. The second surprising result here, and very interesting result, is that the effects you know, are somewhat different between small caps and large caps. In fact, the, the, the overall effects are really driven by, by the small caps. So, uh, so it's interesting to think about why. So of course, you know, as, as Marius mentioned, uh, there, is heter there is probably heterogeneity in traders' valuation, and maybe this dispersion, you know, this heterogeneity is larger in small caps. This is Mario's uh, explanation, and this is, this is the explanation that, that the authors are giving in the paper. Uh, I think it would be interesting to provide evidence to support this claim. Uh, that's, that's a conjecture, but there is no direct evidence in the paper that this is what is driving the empirical result. I think you know, a reasonable conjecture is that differences in relative tick size between small caps and large caps might be an important driver. Uh, my guess, I, I, I'm not sure, maybe I'm wrong, but I, my guess is that in the case of bats, um, the relative tick size is larger for small caps than large caps. And we know that in this case, that's going to make you know, uh, neutrality more difficult to, to, to obtain. So that's especially, you know, small caps, those are especially the stocks for which I would expect the neutrality result to break down because the tick size is large. So that makes you know, any attempt to neutralize the effect of, uh, of rebates more difficult. And that's consistent with what is observed here, but maybe what would be interesting is to have control for tick size. That is to have two groups in small caps, one with large relative tick size, one with small relative tick size, and check whether you know, there are differences uh, in the effect of the change in fees on CXC and DXC on, uh, on liquidity and so on so forth. So in conclusion, does the make tech fee breakdown matter empirically? I think that uh, the paper by Marius, Barbara, and Ingrid provide convincing evidence that it does. Uh, whether it does mainly because of the change in the level of the fee or the breakdown of the fees, well, it's less clear. I'm not completely sure that the experiment allows to draw conclusion of that. Why it matters, again, I think the message of the paper on that is not completely clear. Uh, my guess is that it does because of variation in the tick size. That, that's probably an important uh, factor. And is regulatory intervention needed? Well, I'm not sure we can, we can say that from the paper. I mean, what the paper suggests is that, yes, maybe, you know, that gives the possibility to a platform, make a take a pricing, give the possibility to a platform to raise its fees and still gain market share, which, which is a bit surprising. But I think we need more research. In particular, you know, we need to think more about whether standard measures of market quality tell us something like the spread, that tell us something about welfare and gains from trade. It's, it's really unclear in limit of the market because potentially in limit of the market, you have buy side traders on both sides of the market, makers and takers. And so it's not clear when the bid spread goes up, for instance, that this is bad for, for the buy side, maybe the makers, on, uh, maybe people posting limit orders are better off. So the only way you know, to address this type of question is to have uh, a, what economists call a welfare analysis, where you really compute gains from trade uh, for each party. And that's, that's very difficult to do empirically. That can be done uh, theoretically. So that's my, that's my comments. Excellent. Thank you very much, Jerry, for that very comprehensive uh, review of the big picture and, and the paper. Um, we have one question to get us started, um, uh, actually a question and then I guess an observation or comment uh, from Paul Besson from Euronex. He says, in make or take of fees, one should consider that passive posting is much more sensitive to fees while aggressive trading is. 
far less sensitive to prices as best execution rules find. So I'd be interested in Marius's uh, comments on that. But before you do, uh, Paul also says a strong result that can be observed looking at RTS 28 reports from brokers. Uh, those reports fulfilled by brokers show that venues with rebates attract more passive flows than other venues. And this is a strong result. Uh, one, uh, sorry, this result is a strong one, although this does not tell whether the market share would change. Do you have any uh, responses to that, Marius? Uh, sure, so, so shall I first respond to the, to the extra question? Let's stick with the questions. Let's stick to the questions from the audience first, and then we'll come to the, the response to Thierry if we have time. Okay, I didn't get the first one very well, but the second one, uh, in fact, uh, both our model does suggest that um, uh, changes, I think I mentioned that in my, in my presentation, that uh, changes in the, in the rebates are, uh, are affecting more those uh, categories of uh, small support. So basically those categories were was those stocks in the sense that uh, they're more likely to submit limit orders. So they're more passive uh, it's a, it's a, like, it's a, it's a, a ratio with active traders for that stock. Uh, so in that sense, I think it's consistent with what the, the question was, the evidence basically of that, that they are more sensitive to rebates, the passive flows. Um, uh, uh, the access fee, I believe was the first question. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. The, the first part was just the, the observation that passive posting is much more sensitive to fees while aggressive trading is less sensitive to fees. Yeah, that's actually, uh, that's actually true in our model uh, in, in the sense that heterogeneous, when you have higher heterogeneous um, gains from trade, meaning you have more market orders, you're less likely to be affected by rebates. However, I have to say that uh, what matters for everything is the take fees. So the, uh, if, if, if you increase take fees, uh, that, that, that basically affects everything. Of course, if the information is um, in private information, in that sense it's, uh, uh, it's either short leave or it's, um, uh, is large enough then to accommodate for the take fees, and then you're going to see that. But uh, cross section, what we find in the day, in the in the theory part, and also in our data, consistent with our data, is uh, we find consistency with our theory with our data is that take fees matter a lot uh, for the overall market share of, of each venue, uh, and when you are very aggressive, rebates don't don't matter so much, but take fees do still matter. Yeah. Okay, That's great. So, so we don't have any other questions from the audiences yet. So go ahead and uh, and uh, respond to Terry Thierry's uh, uh, oh, Yeah, Terry did a, a fantastic job, uh, actually, when it comes to uh, giving me a, a better picture of what's going on when it comes to uh, implications of uh, make take fees and and and. and, um, and uh, what what matters the most. Uh, Thank you so much for all of the comments. I want to start by saying that um, we uh, the the total fee is very important uh, for us in the paper, and in fact, uh, uh, willingly when um, when we did the theory part, we only change the change the same and make fee and take fee the same, so that we keep the total fee uh, constant. Uh, and that's why we, we came out with those predictions. And I, I agree that the, in, the empirics do both show that there is an increase uh, in, in total fee, both, both markets. Um, we will, and we're in the process of actually uh, uh, doing some extra, um, extra analysis in our theory part of incorporating changing in fees, total fees, uh, and, and see what is the, the difference. Um, and uh, uh, we're gonna do that in, in, in theoretically, but uh, one comment from an empirical perspective, uh, two comments actually, one is that uh, we see the same increase in total fees in both markets and yet the effect is different. 
Uh, we see one market benefiting, which is BXC, uh, and, and the other market, when it comes to market quality and market share, let me be clear, uh, and, and the other market uh, deteriorating. So uh, I don't think it's the whole picture is not the total fees. Uh, I understand that we have to control for that um, when we look at these empirical results, but they, in my view, uh, what we find, the empirical support that we find with our uh, with our predictions, uh, to our predictions, uh, sort of suggests that the, the the change in each one of these tech fees and make fees matter as 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 well. Uh, it's a very very good suggestion to actually look um, at the relative tick between large firms and uh, and small firms. Uh, I believe we con um, in general what we did is that we, when we did the stratified sample, we, we made sure we, we get also large price and small price stocks in each one of the sub, sub, sub funds of large cap and small caps. So in that sense, we uh, initially, when we took our sample, we controlled for that. But of course, it's uh, better, better would be to control for the relative tick, um, for the relative tick when we look at changes between large and small firms. I think that's, that's really great. Uh, in order to be able to separate um, the effects. Uh, we do agree completely that uh, the, the take fee and make fee matters, um, the, the decomposition matters. Uh, when you have a tick size, that's exactly what we argue in the paper. Uh, it's in the theory part, we, it, it matters uh, for tick size. And yes, it's a fantastic idea to uh, change the tick size in our theory part when we look at reductions in rebates. I think that's fantastic. It's going to show us exactly how much it matters. Um, I think that's really, really nice. Thank you very much for that, Yuri. Thank you. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, Excellent. Thank you very much, Marios and Thierry. Uh, we don't have any other questions from the audience. It would be great to hear from uh, the market operators uh, in terms of their thinking around the the way in which fees get set, and also from the sell side community in terms of how they respond as these changes occur. I'm sure Marios and his co-authors would love to hear from you uh, after today if, uh, if there is an opportunity. So thanks very much, Marios and Thierry. Uh, we're right on time. We've got a two minutes to spare if people want to take a bathroom break or some other sort of quick break before we uh, start the next session. Um, I will sign out and log back into the, to the next uh, room and uh, see you very shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Tim.